Well, it's possible to manually create regions using the quantification parameters dialog window to quantify a survey spectrum such as this one. What we'll do now is look at the element library and how to manage the creation of regions based on the element library. The first thing we need to do is identify the peaks that we see here. So I've clicked on the on the peak, the largest peak, and it's most likely going to be fluorine 1s. So I've I can now see that I've put up markers that correspond to the fluorine 1s as a an OJ peak that matches it. So that's probably fluorine. And there's another one and that's probably oxygen. And yes we can see there's an OJ peak here corresponding to the oxygen 1s so oxygen is plausible and we could go through and identify these peaks individually or we could say find peaks and having said find peaks the elements that are most likely to correspond to these uh, peaks have been identified in the periodic table uh, but it's also included peaks that are possible such as this boron peak I don't believe there's any boron in this sample and if I look at the data the structure that has been identified as boron is probably uh, a loss peak associated with this sulfur 2p and so we'll deselect that and we'll see just check that the other peaks make sense there's a carbon 1s and the carbon 1s has some structure here so we have to bear that in mind when we create a region and let's see now if we look through the set you can see that the sulfur has a corresponding OJ let's just verify there is some structure there yes that looks like we've got some kind of sulfur structure so that matches the sulfur OJ line and you can clearly see a carbon, nitrogen, uh, oxygen and fluorine that all correspond to the photoelectron transitions fluorine 1s, oxygen 1s, um, nitrogen 1s and carbon 1s with the sulfur 2p is the one that we're going to use to quantify so having identified and decided that these are all good what we can do is create regions using the button on the periodic table or even the one that's on the element table they both do the same thing based on the the buttons you see highlighted here a set of regions have been created and a table has been placed over the data now there were five peaks identified, five elements, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, fluorine, and there was sulfur, but sulfur has not been had a region created. And the region reason for that is that when I bring up the sulfur line for the 2P you can see that there is a a significant gap between where the element markers are and where the peak is and that's that's understandable in terms of the chemistry this is pr going to be a sulfate like peak and the line has been entered into the element library that is consistent with a sulfide and sulfur does um, respond by energy shifts uh, according to the chemistry so there's a, a good reason why it didn't find it but the the problem is that having n not created a region we now need to create a region and we can do this by manually entering using the element table um, an entry for the sulfur so if I select in the element library you can see the relative sensitivity factor here uh, the reason that I have to select it is because the survey spectrum is in a VAMAS block that knows nothing about the actual elements that the data represents unlike some of these narrow scans you this is supposed to be a fluorine this survey doesn't have the same context information so in order to uh, I, um, create a region here I have to indicate the element and I have done with this sulfur 2p and then I can say create having select, having um, indicated on the element table create will create a region and the region is based on the display limits so I need to just adjust so that I've got a, a, a region that then 
is the peak itself and you'll see the sensitivity factor is the same it's got a, a Shirley background that was the last one used and we have now see that it's added to the table and I've got a quantification based on the regions as created so far now the one that I had a, a query about was going to be the carbon 1s but we we can just check all of them by pressing the reset button and then zooming out it'll step us through the different regions now this is nitrogen it's got some structure here which uh, is consistent with the nitrogen chemistry we won't worry about that but the carbon we've got carbon here and then this is also carbon probably bonded with the fluorine so if I, I need to include that in the quantification so I adjust the, the region uh, but you can see now that a background based on the Shirley background cuts through the data and so it's not a good estimate for the peak area so what I'll do now is make a small adjustment so I'm going to actually just I'll delete that so I can keep my carbon peaks all together and I'll recreate a carbon peak over here and I'm going to create one that is for the small peak and then I'll create another one this is going to be for the larger peak and again I'm going to so I've got two regions now to define the background so I, I need to add these two intensities together to find the amount of carbon that I've got so it's these two numbers here must be added together to give me the carbon now I, I could also do another little trick I could create another region and again I want this to be carbon and I'm going to call this region 1, this one region 2, I'm going to set the RSF to 0 in that, the RSF to 0 in that and the trick is to change the background type instead of having Shirley where it's now calculated a background that is cutting through the data again if I change that to skip what it's allows me to do is to use the background that has already been calculated so these two although the RSFs are set to zero the background is a Shirley in one and a Shirley in the other two regions independently creating backgrounds uh, but with no contribution as you can see zero and zero for the concentration but the one peak that I've got a skip background is using the existing background that you see here and integrating the signal above that background and reporting the result here so we now have the amount of carbon is now deriving from this skip background region that that is across both so if I click on where it says G it'll zoom and so you can see that's both of them if I click on where it says F it shows me the one part of the peak and there's the other part so G encompasses both so now you can see the report and here because this is a regions report it's actually showing you all the regions even though uh, we've got zeros here now if I wanted to see a, a, a report that is just going to have the values that have uh, RSFs that are assigned in other words the ones that will give me a contribution to the atomic concentration calculation then I can create from the annotation dialog window rather than using regions which is what you can see already I'm going to go to the quantification tab which will rely on what I've got selected in the right hand side it's got regions selected and I can set myself uh, a font and then say apply you can see I've got two sets of annotation and what I need to do is just scroll out a bit because my region was overlapping that if I now point at the annotation marker and move it you can see that I've got two tables one is the original one and because I clicked on it it's come to the top of the table here and if I click on that one it'll come to the top and that's the one that I've just created and this one now shows you just the carbon that is deriving from the region that had a, 
a non-zero RSF. So what I'll do now is just delete this table here and we now have a quantification report that I can then copy and I can put that into some other program. So there's a report coming from the survey spectrum based on these regions.